Hey everybody, this is Geegan here and welcome back to the channel or if this is your first time on my channel then welcome to the channel and how are you guys all doing today? I hope you guys are all having a great day so far. I know I am having a great day so far. But anyways, on to the video. So today's video I'm bringing you guys is another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews and I'm actually going to be reviewing two movies this time around, both of which are David Lynch films. It's been a while since I last reviewed a David Lynch movie. The last time I reviewed a David Lynch movie was back in July when I reviewed Twin Peaks Firewalk with me. And uh, both of these films I'm going to be talking about today are actually based on true events that happened in two different time periods. But I don't have anything else to add. So uh, let's take a look at the two movies I'm going to be reviewing today. So let's take a look at them. So the first film we're going to take a look at today is the 1980 film The Elephant Man, which was originally released on, on October 10th, 1980. And this film was David Lynch's second film he directed after Eraserhead, which I will probably do a review of Eraserhead one of these days. And believe it or not, this film was actually produced by Mel Brooks, although... His name isn't in the credits, but he actually actually produced this movie. I guess they didn't put his name in the credits because this is a very serious film and Mel Brooks is best known for comedies, as you probably know, like Young Frankenstein and all that stuff. And we're as always, we're going to get into the storyline of the movie in a spoiler-free way, and then we'll get into my thoughts of the movie. So anyways... Let's take a dive into The Elephant Man. Now, The Elephant Man is actually based on a true story of John Merrick, a man who was born heavily deformed and was living in, in London during the Victorian era. And this film, John Merrick is played by the late John Hurt. Rest in peace, by the way. Now, the film starts off where, um, where Merrick was working as a circus freak in a circus where he gets the name the terrible elephant man where people would just come look at him and just either be freaked out disgusted or otherwise think negatively because of his uh deformed body but then one day a surgeon named dr travis played by anthony hopkins decides to try to help a merrick with his deformity and try to make things better in his life and make all the people respect him and accept him for who he is and show compassion and kindness for him although there are still going there are still people that are just negative of him specifically there's a guy that brings that pays people at a bar he brings them to his window at a hospital so people could just stare at his face and be freaked out by him and, well, that's basically the storyline of the film in a nutshell. I just want to start off by saying that The Elephant Man is definitely one of the saddest movies I've ever seen, but it was one of the best movies I've seen, and definitely one of David Lynch's very best films. And this movie, the entire movie's in black and white, much like his previous film, Eraserhead. And I gotta say, the performances in this movie are really really well done the acting is really well done the set designs are really well done it looks really nice it makes it look like the really look like the victorian era in london and it was well casted anthony hawkins did a really great job in his role and the special effects for for um john merrick like the special effects look really really great and um, it's a really sad movie, but it's a really, really great movie. It's kind of hard to believe that David Lynch actually directed this film after Eraserhead. Well, this was his second film. And the film that came out after this one was Dune and then uh, Blue Velvet, which was probably his best well-known movie, I'd say. But uh, I have a, I really, really enjoyed this film. It's definitely one of Lynch's best movies, like I said before. And, um, I'll be honest with you, I thought I was going to cry watching this. Now, I didn't cry, but I felt my eyes getting a little watery, like it was tears were going to come out, but I didn't cry. I don't normally cry in movies. Well, 
I didn't cry watching this, but I almost did, so to speak. It's not the only movie I nearly cried watching. The only other movie I can think of was Philadelphia, which I'll probably talk about one of these days. But I don't have anything else to add to this review. I really, really enjoyed this film, and I do recommend it if you haven't seen it. But just don't expect this film to be a happy watch. It's a pretty depressing film. It's definitely one of the saddest films I've ever seen. But uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. And I'm going to give The Elephant Man an 8.5 out of 10. Now we move on to the second and final film I'm reviewing for today, which is the 1999 film The Straight Story, again directed by David Lynch. And this film was originally released on October 15th, 1999. And this film was released two years after Lost Highway and two years before Mulholland Drive. And uh, this film, much like The Elephant Man, it was based on a true story. This film is based on the true story of Alvin Strait. Now, the interesting thing about this movie is that this is a Disney movie. Yep, a Disney movie. David Lynch directed a Disney movie. And this is a G-rated movie. It's the only family-friendly film from David Lynch. Everything else from David Lynch is far from family-friendly. Sure, The Elephant Man is rated PG, but honestly, I wouldn't really say that's a family-friendly movie. And Dune, um, I wouldn't say that's a family-friendly movie either, despite that movie being PG-13. Well, we'll get to that a little later. But anyways, let's get into the storyline of the straight story, and then we'll get on to my thoughts of the movie. So, let's dive into the straight story. So, the storyline for the straight story, it follows a man named Alvin Strait, played by the late Richard Farnsworth, which, before we continue any further, I feel that it should be noted that this film was Richard Farnsworth's final, perform final film he acted in before he died a year later. So, uh, just pointing that out. Anyways... Back to the movie. So Alvin lives on a farm in a town called Lawrence near somewhere in uh, Iowa. And he lives on a farm with his daughter named Rosie, played by Sissy Spacek. And uh, Alvin was a World War II veteran. And uh, one day he gets a phone call saying that his brother named Lyle, played by the late Harry Dean Stanton, had a stroke. And that, and Lyle, I mean, Alvin hasn't seen Lyle in over a decade, and he decides to travel up to Wisconsin to visit his brother. But there are some problems. Number one, he doesn't have a driver's license or a car. Number two, Alvin has some health problems, and he needs, uh, and he needs two canes to walk. And... Well, he has no choice, but he decides to travel travel to Wisconsin on a 1960s John Deere lawnmower while carrying a, a little uh, trailer of stuff. Yep, you heard me right. He traveled from Lawrence, Wis Lawrence Iowa to Blue River, Wisconsin in 240 kilometers on a on a slow ass old John Deere tractor. Yep, that he did that. While on the way, he meets different people in while on his journey to Wisconsin. And uh that's uh, basically the storyline of the movie in a nutshell. Well, after watching the straight story, I got to say I'm very surprised that David Lynch actually directed this movie. As surprised as I was when Martin Scorsese directed Shutter Island. You wouldn't expect that David Lynch would direct this movie. David Lynch best known, best known for directing some weird and strange films like Blue Velvet, Lost Highway, Mulholland Drive, and so on. But he did. He directed a G-rated Disney movie about an old man traveling from... Iowa to Wisconsin on a 1960s John Deere lawnmower, which of course this movie was based on a true story, which the real story actually happened back in 1994, two years before the real, before the real Alvin Strait passed away in 1996. 
But I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed this film. I really liked all the performances, and the dialogue in this movie is really seems really realistic. And uh, the acting was really well done, and it was well casted. Richard Farnsworth did a really great job in this movie. And may he rest in peace, considering he ended up killing himself a year after this film was released. It should be noted, while this film was in production, Richard Farnsworth was suffering terminal cancer. And a year later, he would uh, ended up he ended up committing suicide a year after this movie came out. So rest in peace, Richard Farnsworth. And um, aside from that, not only the performances in this movie is great, the cinematography is really well done, the lighting is really well done, and there's some really good visual shots. And I really like the music. And I overall just really, really enjoyed this film. And like I said before, I'm very surprised that David Lynch directed this movie. And it's definitely the only family-friendly film from David Lynch. Basically, everything else that isn't this movie isn't family-friendly. Sure, The Elephant Man's got a PG rating, but I wouldn't say that's a family-friendly movie. And Dune is PG-13, but that's not... I don't know if I would say that one's family-friendly. But everything else, aside from those three movies, is not ones you'd want to watch with your parents. Especially movies like Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. That's a dark movie. But I don't really have a whole lot else to add to this review. But I really, really enjoyed the straight story. It's definitely one of uh, David Lynch's best movies. And I'm quite surprised he directed this movie. I wouldn't expect that he would direct a movie like this. And uh, this is a good one to watch with your folks. If you're wanting to have a family movie night with your parents. This would be a good one to watch. And uh, it's just a really, really great movie. And I believe it got a uh, Oscar nomination for Best Actor, which went to which I think Richard Farnsworth was nominated for, but he didn't win it, I think. Or I think that might have been the Cannes Film Fest. I can't remember. But in conclusion, if you like David Lynch movies, definitely check this one out. It's definitely one of David Lynch's best movies. So I'm going to give The Straight Story an 8.2 out of 10. And that's going to be it for this review. And, uh, well, guys, that's, uh, that's about it for this video. So uh, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, feel free to follow me on my Instagram, Letterboxd, and Serialized. The links are in the description down below, as always. And uh, what do you guys think of these two movies? Let me know in the comment section below. And... Um, and uh, yeah, so until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, everyone. Peace out.